Class, ladies and gentlemen, warm welcome for Doug. Good evening, everyone, and it is great to see you all here. Uh, Adam and Brad, and I do have a question for you, and that is, how are you enjoying being at the Green Briar this week? They made a great choice of venue, and again, it's just uh, it's so special to see you all here. Thank you very much for coming. And uh, I am going to double pass by changing slides as well. Great. You know, uh, Adam introduced our board of directors, most of whom are here tonight. And I've been working with boards for, gosh, more than 25 years now. I can genuinely say that the most dedicated boards I have ever worked with are the American Foundry Society Boards of Directors. Let's just show our appreciation one more time. You know, through the years at the Foundry Leadership Summit, um, we have played on many of the nation's finest golf courses, and this year is no exception. The main, as Paul can attest, Paul Mickle and many others can attest, the man uh, who did the organizing, he chaired the golf tournament this year, he organized the foursomes, he even arranged for some pretty good weather. Mike Didion, Mike, thank you so much for your service. Well, it's my privilege to bring you up to date on the state of our industry and the state of AFS. And at this time, the metal casting industry is strong and resilient. Metal casters are standing up to serious challenges, as you know firsthand. Material shortages, rampant inflation like we've not seen in 40 years, worker shortages that are so persistent, rising interest rates now, an overvalued dollar, and even talk of a possible recession. Yet the demand for castings has remained very high, and metal casters are doing all it takes to produce the highly engineered castings that are needed for today's modern economy and for our national defense. And that says a lot about all of you in our industry. Now we're on, <clears throat> excuse me, we're on track to see casting sales rise by more than 10% in 2022. We came into the year a $43 billion industry. By the end of this year, we will be a $47 billion industry. This month, we did another survey, quarterly survey of our members. 78% of foundries uh, told us they still have a positive business outlook for the next 12 months. That's down from 90%, but 78% is still a very strong percentage. So cautious optimism, I think, would be the best description uh, to describe the outlook at this time. The long-term outlook, multi-year outlook, is also very bright, as illustrated by the investments being made in our foundries. In fact, nine out of every 10 foundries are making capital investments this year, which is another very positive signal. You know, we saw that optimism in April at Cast Expo in Columbus, Ohio, where nearly 5,000 people were in attendance. Most of you were there, and our 288 exhibitors told us that the attendees on the show floor were serious about making purchases for their foundries. The attendees also benefited from more than 100 educational sessions, two keynote addresses, and a very insightful point lecture delivered by Gene Bai. And then, in partnership with FEF, we welcomed nearly 150 students and key professors to Cast Expo at no charge. Uh, Mike Lenahan, I think, was the one who coined the phrase that Cast Expo is kind of like the Super Bowl of the metal casting industry. <laughs> and with that in mind, what a great way to introduce students to the exciting metal casting profession than to have them at Cast Expo. So even in the face of the major challenges, the state of the metal casting industry is unquestionably strong and resilient. Similarly, this is a very exciting time in the life of the American Foundry Society. And when many people think of AFS, the first thing they think of is technical services and research, and with good reason. AFS is 10 technical divisions under the leadership of Technical Council Chair uh, Dave Weiss of Eck Industries. 
are spearheading a tremendous array of conferences, webinars, and research projects. As new challenges and opportunities arise, AFS is staying nimble and evolving our programming to strengthen the success of our members. A recent example uh, concerns Industry 4.0. In July, the newly rebranded AFS Engineering and Smart Manufacturing Division, led by Greg Bray of ECNS, presented our first ever in-person Foundry Industry 4.0 conference. It was out just outside of Chicago, it had 110 people uh, in attendance, and it got very strong reviews. Now, other technical conferences recently have included the Aluminum Conference, which was held in St. Louis uh, in June, and then just last week, we had the SAND Conference uh, in Milwaukee. We've also got a full array of uh, other technical conferences scheduled for 2023. Also, the technical library continues to be just a tremendous source of benefit. In our last fiscal year, 13,000 articles were downloaded from that. In addition, with the webinars we presented over the fiscal year, uh, more than 1,000 views of those. So again, a lot of great technical programming AFS is providing. Now in terms of research, there's two categories. One is AFS-funded research. And at the moment, there's more than $400,000 in active projects going forward. And over the course of the next nine or 10 months, we'll be investing another $210,000 in research as selected by the AFS Research Board. As this graphic illustrates, uh, many of the different divisions are contributing to that, including molding and cast iron, additive manufacturing, aluminum, and other disciplines. Now that commitment is in addition to the other branch of research, which is projects that are being coordinated by AFS in conjunction with the American uh, Metal Casting Consortium and with the ACRC, which is the Advanced Casting Research Consortium out in California. Now last autumn, to direct all of our technical services, AFS hired Brian McGann. Many of you know Brian. He's a longtime AFS committee leader who had worked at the SIGO, worked at ASM International. He's a very well-respected technical leader in the AFS tradition. And he's off to a very, uh, very strong start. Another major initiative for AFS is promoting safety and environmental quality in the foundry. And next month, AFS will be presenting the 34th Annual Environment, Health, and Safety Conference in be in Milwaukee. It is bar none the best conference of its kind. And our very involved EHS division, which is chaired by Craig Schmeisser of Mad River Strategies, they devote tremendous energy and, and resources to planning and coordinating this conference. We hope that every foundry will be about taking advantage of attending that. Also on that front, Modern Casting Magazine recently, for the first time, devoted a special supplement uh, to safety in the foundry. And we'll also be, in the coming months, presenting more webinars on foundry safety and on these all important environmental issues. Now, to further support our members on EHS topics, we hired, now we didn't hire all four of those guys, but we, we hired Greg Kramer, who's the fellow on the right. And uh, you may recognize the other three. Greg previously spent many years with ME Global. He's a past AFS committee leader. And Greg provides not only tremendous expertise, but he also brings that commitment to superior member service that has truly become a hallmark of AFS. So Greg is a, uh, a brand new member. You know, another area that AFS is very well known for is advocacy and government affairs. And recently, our corporate members were telling us that they were finding it challenging to keep up with the ever-changing employment laws and regulations, and understandably so. So in response, AFS, just in the last couple of months, has teamed up with a prominent law firm. And we've introduced a brand new monthly corporate member benefit called Employment Law Update, or ELU, to meet that need. 
It's receiving excellent uh, feedback. In fact, one foundry leader in Pennsylvania thought it was so good that he sent it to his own lawyer saying, why aren't you sending me stuff like this? <laughs> so employment law update, be on the lookout for that. Also tonight, I'm pleased to announce another new member benefit for our corporate members, and AFS is instituting quarterly webinars in which our policy advocates Stephanie Salmon and Jeff Hannibal are going to be explaining the key policy issues that are in play and their implications for our corporate members. Again, this is a new corporate member benefit that we start in the near future. So the idea behind it is not only to keep our members posted, but also by keeping advocacy issues and uh, issues in advocacy rather front and center throughout the year, all 12 months of the year, we believe we're going to be better positioned to encourage metal casters to both invite lawmakers to their foundries to see it firsthand and to participate in the government affairs fly-in in Washington that most of you heard about earlier today. You know, very early in my career, I served in the Reagan administration and uh, was proud to do so. And as President Reagan uh, used to say, we must hang together or surely we will hang separately. Well, put, put another way, you know, there, there are few limits to what we can accomplish when the metal casting community and when the business community are unified and engaged, unified and engaged. So the fly-in attendees universally come away from that telling us that it's an incredibly valuable experience for them and for their companies. And when we turn out in large numbers, we reinforce on Capitol Hill the importance of our industry. Indeed, AFS has scored some important policy victories over the past year. You all remember when the Biden administration tried to impose a burdensome COVID testing mandate on employers last winter, AFS responded quickly. We brought together safety experts from McWayne and from Metal Technologies to testify before OSHA and explain why foundries should be exempted from that rule. Well, ultimately, the ill-advised mandate was struck down in the courts as unconstitutional. And so that was taken care of. Now in another victory, an AFS coalition won enactment of the infrastructure investment bill that's going to modernize our ports and our water infrastructure and our roads and highways and increase the demand for casting, castings for a number of years to come. AFS has been at the forefront of emphasizing a principle that's very important, and that is when taxpayer funds are being used for infrastructure, the materials and the components should come from the United States, and we will continue to stay on that message. AFS also helped win enactment of the Ocean Shipping Reform Bill just a couple months ago to address supply chain problems. And our advocacy work can, well, continues on a number of the matters that Stephanie will be discussing tomorrow, uh, issues like trade, environmental justice, uh, climate change, the heat stress regulation, waters of the USA, air emissions, tax policy, and on and on. These issues pose millions of dollars, millions of dollars of implications for metal casters, and AFS is leading the fight to advance and defend our interests. Now, education and training is another area in which AFS is an industry leader. And the AFS Institute is now offering training in four different formats. There's the in-person training at our headquarters, which has resumed in the last several months. There is in-plant training at uh, member plants, and we have had a couple of those already since the, uh, uh, we started offering that again. Also, there is a live remote training via Zoom and Foundry e-learning, which can be taken at each student's convenience. We've got three new classroom courses that are being introduced for the first time this autumn. And for Foundry e-learning, AFS just launched a brand new advertising campaign built around the theme, if you're hiring, you need Foundry e-learning. And the campaign also incorporates testimonials from Foundries that rely on Foundry e-learning to train their employees a number of which are right here uh, in the room tonight. Now, you know, for a number of years, 
There were concerns about the financial performance of the institute. Education is a it's a challenging, you know, it's a challenging thing to present. That's why, uh, you know, colleges and universities aren't really for-profit institutions. Even some of the for-profit education organizations don't make money. Uh, but happily, the institute has turned in the best two-year performance, uh, dating back financially, dating back to the 1990s. So the institute won't be resting on any laurels but it is operating now from a better financial position than it has in the recent past. And that, that's a good springboard for going forward. AFS is meeting the human, human resources needs of our industry in many other ways as well. We've got a number of members who are just so involved in helping us do that through the HR division, Liz and many others. and. Um, uh, the Society just held back in May a very well-received uh, management and development summit at our headquarters in Schaumburg, Illinois. And then we recently just issued a new wage and salary survey. This slide uh, lists a number of the other ways that AFS is supporting metal casters when it comes to human resources needs. So we talked a little bit about volunteers, uh, AFS has nearly 1,000 volunteers active between uh, women in metal casting, future leaders in metal casting, our committees, our chapters, the board of directors, and so on. And as we heard in today's panel, led by Brad, the member involvement is the lifeblood of the association, and it's even more than that. It also delivers tremendous value to our volunteers and to the companies that employ them. And so we thank everybody. We're very grateful for all of our volunteers. Speaking of involvement, the AFS is very engaged with the World Foundry Organization on many levels. AFS was well represented on the executive board of the WFO for many years by Denny Dotson. And that tradition continues now with Chris Norch of Denison Industries. Let's take a moment to thank Chris for his service on the WFO board. Member involvement begins with membership, and as Adam uh, mentioned just a few moments ago, we're pleased to report that corporate membership is at its highest levels in at least 15 years. Individual memberships actually declined during the uh, early months of the pandemic. They are now on the rise as well. All of this is possible only because of the investment of our great industry. Let's just have another round of applause for our industry. So going forward, AFS is uh, refining our multi-year strategic plan to ensure that our society continues to deliver for our members and for our industry, and that we remain nimble as things change, as circumstances uh, change. Uh, Peter Wright of Lambie Wright is assisting the board of directors in that planning process, and we're grateful to the board and Peter for the time they're putting into the strategic planning uh, process. Finally, just a word about our AFS staff team. Uh, you know, like most trade associations, AFS has fewer employees than we had in the past, yet the team is truly doing more with less. They are tremendously committed to serving the metal casting industry. And several of our team members are here tonight. I'm going to ask them to rise. Let's recognize Mike Lakis, Stephanie Salmon, Ben Yates, and Kim Ferrugia. Jeff Cook, the chair of the Board of Awards, will be presenting several major awards. In the meantime, please enjoy your dinner, and thank you again for your commitment to AFS. Enjoy dinner.